Good day chaps. So today's quick video is on the Excalibur. This was a British light airborne tank destroyer designed at the 12th Royal Armoured Advanced Course at the School of Tank Technology in 1961. This project called for a machine that had to weigh less than 30 tonnes, be able to fit inside an RAF Blackburn B101 Beverly heavy transport aircraft and still be fully amphibious. The other requirements included excellent mobility and the option to mount a weapon capable of destroying any Soviet tank of the period, yet still offering a low profile as much as possible. This STT specification was a mirror project of the current GSOR, or General Staff Operational Requirement, issued at the time, number 1006, which resulted in a series of designs of lightweight mobile anti-tank systems mounting a combination of guns and missiles on both wheels and tracks, which we're going to cover at some point. However, for now, it's worth noting that the Excalibur is a side project to those and not part of them directly. During this period in the early 60s, primary threat to NATO was the Warsaw Pact, composed of the USSR and its satellite states, and more importantly, its vast tank formations, which were massed along the eastern German border and many of the vehicles studied or designed at the School of Tank Technology during this 60s period focused on manoeuvre and destroy tactics with rapid reaction airborne vehicles being sought to plug the expected Soviet breakout tactics. To this end, the designers chose to go with an unusual configuration. Rather than choose the standard casemated layout seen in some other designs of this time, the engineers chose to mount a semi-rotating turret on the front of the tank chassis to allow for high gun traverse angles while keeping a relatively low profile. This design overcame several core problems with casemated vehicles, notably their weakness to immobilising factors. Casemated or turretless tanks with the gun mounted in the frontal superstructure rely heavily on their tracks to pivot and make adjustments before firing. Any damage or intervening terrain that prevents this effectively can neutralise the vehicle's offensive ability, as their gun traverse is often poor once immobile. By having a front-mounted turret with a 45-degree arc to either side, the Excalibur overcame this problem, as it no longer needed to rely on hull adjustments to bring its weapons to bear, and this, in turn, would also help to lower its overall signature and thus its survivability. It also made the gun depression a lot easier, as the gun had nothing to below it to worry about. Only the roof height of the turret would limit its actual gun depression. In order to keep the combat weight down, and to meet the criteria of fitting and being transported inside the Beverly aircraft, the developers also went with a light aluminium armour layout. The hull front and turret superstructure were just 50mm of well-angled armour, tapering down to 40mm on the lower front plate. The superstructure was 25mm, with 15mm at the rear. The aluminium armour was also chosen as it was light enough for making airborne tanks, but strong enough to stop what was required in the design specifications, notably light artillery fragments and medium machine gun fire. Several weapons were considered in the design, but a 105mm low pressure gun was chosen. Low pressure weapons were built to fit into platforms or chassis that require a larger calibre but cannot handle the high recoil pressures or have the space for a long recoil. Whilst not ideally used for conventional kinetic energy rounds, they work very well with heat, or high explosive anti-tank, and HESH, high explosive squash head rounds, that require lower velocities on impact to work effectively. Low pressure guns do require the gunner to compensate for the large drop of the shell over larger distances, in order to hit far away targets, however. Excalibur's gun was only designed to engage medium armour at medium ranges. For the heavy stuff, she had another surprise up her sleeve. Meanwhile, for close protection, Excalibur had a 12.7mm heavy machine gun Pintel mounted and a 7.62mm machine gun Coaxley mounted. For the engagement of the expected Soviet heavy tanks, Excalibur could also come fitted with swing fire missiles in the main body, if required. These would be in a series of bins mounted in the boxy body above the track. With Swingfire's ability to change its course by 90 degrees in the first second of firing, something few other anti-tank guided missiles have been able to emulate, it would allow the Excalibur to fire from a defilated position behind a hill or a ridge 
exposing little, if any, of the vehicle to return fire, and knocking out any tanker at its time with over 700 mm of penetration. Power to the Excalibur was provided by Leyland L50. Now it's not clear if this was a typo or a semi-fictional engine at the time, as no reference to an L50 has yet been found. This engine is recorded as a multi-fuel, two-stroke, 580 brake horsepower engine that ran on diesel or MT80 petrol, delivering a top speed of 48 miles per hour, or 77 kilometers per hour, via an Allison XTG 411 three-automatic transmission gearbox, with a road range of 318 miles. Suspension was to be torsion type, with the running gear consisting of five pairs of double road wheels, each with 22-inch wheels, brushed steel tracks, and supported by four return rollers. The engine system also had one more feature. It had a built-in water jet system. This allowed the Excalibur to cross large bodies of water relatively quickly, as the whole system required no real preparation, being inherently amphibious. The crew of three were all based in the turret at the front, the commander and gunner to the right, and loader radio operator to the left. The gunner doubled up as the driver, as Excalibur was never designed to shoot on the move, and the whole system could be switched from gunner to mobility mode at the flick of a switch. The Excalibur itself was never built, however the GSOR 1006 project did see the plans dusted off, and further designs drawn up for a service vehicle, which was later merged into parts of GSOR 3301, which ended up as the CVRT Scorpion. Well guys, I hope you liked that short video on this odd machine. It was one of my research projects of World of Tanks a few years ago, and although they creatively altered the facts, it seems to do okay. I'll cover the other GSOR 1006 vehicles shortly. If you like this, give us a like or subscribe, or feed the YouTube demons algorithms with comments and stuff. And until next time, toodle pip.